God's word and the truth of his love for us and our call for us to love him, how that would work out in our daily lives. And so when we come to the Bible and we look at this idea of love, um, it's, not, it's not just a feeling, but it is a feeling. Um, it's not just a choice, but it is a choice. It's like a combination of things. The love of, of God's word would be a love that chooses to show itself in affection and action continually. Um, it, it's a love of choice. Um, but it's a love that still feels. But it's a love that acts. And there's something in it that's remarkable because it has this dimension that I think is where we most struggle. This idea of continuum. This love is unconditional. Having chosen, it remains true. And, uh, and, and that's the love that we find in our Father for us, our Father in heaven. We find in the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit that God three in one loves us deeply. Um, and, uh, and when we began our look at what it looks like to love this one God, um, looking at the idea of heart and soul, what would it look like to love God heart and soul? To love God with all my heart and soul is to choose to give all of myself to God and for the good of God continually. So, so it's got these two ideas really that, that I, would, I would give from my deep inner self to all of myself, all of my life. I would, I would give that to God, saying, God, I surrender this life to you. My life is for you. But, but this other idea, I give myself not only to God, but for the good of God, is that in this life that you've given me, I, I, I want to use it for your glory and for your good in my lifetime on this planet. This is the idea of to love God hard. And so, and so last week we began by looking at this idea of what does it look like to express yourself, to express um, your love for God. And we considered two, um, two characters, if you like, one David and one Jacob, who were quite different in the way that they came and expressed um, their love to God. Um, when we considered David and Jacob, we found that Jacob was quite an enthusiastic, naturalist kind of a worshipper of God. He loved God. Um, through very enthusiastic expression, um, but also he loved God as he would get out, I guess, outside the city walls and, and outside the, the buildings and into, into God's wild wilderness. Um, and we considered Jacob, who seemed to be always in confrontation, even with God, but that wasn't always a bad thing. It was that he had this fervent desire to receive God's blessing. And he would even, to the point, argue that with God, make deals with God. But there was something in him that was a passion, quite a confrontational passion. And in many ways, it was his way of loving God. And, and this focus of, of wanting blessing for himself as he aged turned into this beautiful thing where he longed to pass the blessing on to others. He actually really got it. And you see, as for many of us, the softening of older years, and he becomes this very contemplative, reflecting on life kind of a guy. Um, it's interesting, I, I even think just, you know, we're now we're here and we're loving God through gathering together and, and we're, we're at least those couple of mixes even in this room, aren't we? Um, you know, some people are enthusiastic worshippers here, loving God like that, and some of others of us are um, quiet critics of those who are enthusiastic worshippers. <laughs> yeah, because maybe we're not wired that way. And maybe we're like Jacob, would rather stand at the back and lean on a staff and look around and go, man, God is good. And sometimes our worship can actually be looking at others and thinking about what God has done in their lives and then stopping and reflecting what he's done in our lives and just giving God praise for that. That's sort of the Jacob character. So we bump into Mary and Martha in this chapter. Let's just um, have a read there. Uh, verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. So it's an interesting start to the story. There's these two ladies, Mary and Martha, the sisters. And, uh, and Martha, uh, she obviously has come to know about Jesus. Maybe he already has a relationship there with Jesus. We don't know, but she does an amazing thing. She opens her home to Jesus. She wants to honour him in her home. And, and she is busy honouring him, preparing a meal for him, getting everything ready. Um, but it's interesting that the writer says she's actually distracted by that. She's so busy in her prep, doing the thing that is actually a thing that she's good at, 
that she actually forgets about her guest. But Mary, her sister, doesn't. And Mary is not at all concerned with getting anything ready for Jesus. She's just happy to be with Jesus and, and to sit at his feet. It's, 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 the other thing that's funny is that as Martha comes, uh, she is really, I think, critical of Mary. But the writer records it in this way. Lord, don't you care that my sister... It's, it's interesting, when you have to be a bit careful sometimes in this whole thing of, of seeing how other people are doing life, there are times when, in fact, our criticism of the way maybe somebody expresses their devotion to God is it can actually be a criticism against Jesus. Because that's what goes on here. And, um, and it's interesting, as the text goes on, verse 41, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. Uh, he must want to get her attention like he's just Martha. Martha, like he's, he's got her focus now, she's been distracted, but now he's got her attention. He says, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or ne indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will be not taken from her. He's saying, Martha, you, you're distracted, and, and you're concerned, but, but you need to actually focus on the necessary thing here, and Mary's doing that, it's me. So there's a lesson <coughs> Now, what tends to happen with this story is, uh, as we go, oh, Martha's not a very good worshipper and lover of Jesus. She's about getting things done. But Mary's got it. She comes quietly and sits at the feet of Jesus and listens to him. She knows how to love Jesus. And it's, it's as if we then say, set that in stone and say, that's the story of Mary and Martha. But it's only the introduction to their story. And we're not going to read it, but if you were to go on to the book of John, chapter 11 and 12, and you should probably read it at home, um, we hear more of Mary and Martha and their relationship with Jesus. What we discover in the story as it unfolds, and, and there's, there's the sickness of their brother Lazarus, and then eventually his death, and then his amazing resurrection. What we find in that story is that Mary and Martha continue to love Jesus. They continue to worship him. And in fact, this little critical interaction that went on seems to have been done and dusted. And Mary and Martha uh, are still very different from each other. Even as they grieve the death of their brother and Jesus arrives, the way in which they interact with grief and with Jesus is very different. And there's no commentary on whether one is right or wrong. They're just different. <coughs> In fact, Jesus meets each of them at their place where they are in their grief, and he doesn't treat them the same. So, so what happens is that when he shows up at their house and their brother has died, and, and both of them are wondering why Jesus didn't come earlier and heal him while he was still alive and sick, Martha comes and goes, Jesus, if you'd only been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And then she goes on to have this this interchange with Jesus, quite intense, going, but I know that you can still raise him from the dead. And Jesus has this very theological discussion with her, but also a personal faith discussion. And, and, and Martha has faith in Jesus. She trusts in Jesus. Mary is away still crying and weeping and mourning and hasn't come out to see Jesus. It's interesting, Mary, the one who's quick to come and be at his feet, when her grief is actually hidden away. And it's Martha that is the one who comes to Jesus this time around. Yeah. And then so she said, Mary, you've got to come. So Mary comes, and she says similar words. You know, she says, if you'd been here, Jesus, my, um, my brother wouldn't have died. And then she weeps. And Jesus weeps with her. You see how different the interchange is? Same Jesus, same grief. Two sisters, very different in their approach to Jesus and their interaction with him. And he meets them where they're at. Um, the next chapter is interesting, the beginning of chapter 12. And it may not be at their house. If you cross-reference it, it may well be that they're at somebody else's house. But Martha is acting host at the house. She is busy again, like in the earlier story, prepping and getting everything ready to honour Jesus and to serve everybody. And we find Mary again at the feet of Jesus, like in the first story. And there's no criticism going on. 
And it's no comment going on other than the criticism of Judas, of Mary, for being too lavish in her pouring out expensive perfume on Jesus. And what I find interesting in that is that it's actually okay. It's okay that Martha is busy loving Jesus by serving him. And it's okay that Mary is loving Jesus by weeping at his feet. It's actually okay. They are so different from each other. And, and, and these are just three really simple lessons that, that I drew as I was just thinking through the different stories of Mary and Martha and their interaction with Jesus. The first one is this. <clears throat> We're all different. And we need to find expression for our love for Jesus. We actually do. We need to, we need to find that. I mean, you could go, oh, I just thought we loved Jesus by coming here on a Sunday and singing songs to him. And it's like, man, loving Jesus is way more than that. There's so many more dimensions to that. You look at David, you look at Jacob, you look at Mary, you look at Martha, each one of them expressing themselves in different ways. And I think we need to find the expression of our love for Jesus. Secondly, we need to refrain from being critical of others' expression of love. When Martha is critical of Mary, Jesus rebukes her. When Judas is critical of Mary, Jesus rebukes him. Don't be the critic of other people's expression of love to Jesus. I need to learn that. We need to learn that. And lastly, this, we need to be open to learn from each other as we would together express our love for Jesus. What I mean by that is this. We can grow up boxing in what we think love for Jesus looks like. Show up at church, sing some songs, pray a prayer, you know, and... And that might be how we define it. But what if there's so much more to how you could express your love to Jesus? How you are designed and how he might interact with you. I think in that we can learn from each other. We can see others love him and learn from them. But also learn to collectively worship. Because when we come in here to worship, here's, here's the truth of it. This is not my coolest way to come and worship Jesus. I'm just putting it out there. Like, I'm a senior pastor here, so this should look, you know, like I would like it to look, you would think. It's not. I would way rather be out on a mountaintop just spending time with Jesus on my own rather than with you bunching here. <laughs> hey, but you know what? There are people I know who crave to be in here together lifting the name of Jesus with their voices. We are different from each other. But I don't therefore go and do my own thing and never gather with others to do this thing together. Mm. And I choose to be here. And I, it's not even that it's a hard thing. And, and in it, I choose to engage with others in bringing voice to my love for Jesus to Him. But there's great freedom in that. And it's this weird thing. Sometimes I choose to just sit in a seat and, and because that's something I've chosen to do because I find that, that I can find my quiet space in the group of a whole lot of people and sometimes I just am listening to the words musing on the words and that's okay, afterwards people are like are you okay? You know, I'm fine, that's one of my best days <clears throat> yeah, it should be like if you see me standing just singing the whole time maybe you should be going, are you okay? <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? we're different from each other we've got to stop being the critics of each other and learn from each other and together express our worship to God too. David, do you want me to tell you a little bit and I'll sort of pitch in about our experience of, um, of a, um, a little tool, a guide called Sacred Pathways that as a staff we used a few months ago and how that that's been helping us to understand better our own expression of love to Jesus but also to understand each other's and grow from that. But before we do that, we're just going to do some introductions here. So um, I'm going to introduce Dave to you, okay? This is Dave over here. Hi, Dave. For those who don't know Dave, well, you got to clap. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your dad? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's one of those enthusiasts. Yeah, right. Um, Dave is the pastor of worship and impact. Impact is like our young adults um, at CBC, and uh, that's Dave's, Dave's role. Um, Dave is a bit of a quirky kind of a character. He is into stuff like crockery, <laughs> fine-tuned coffee, and he likes to visit really old churches, 
we are like diametrically opposed. Like that. <laughs> um, but but this is one of the things that, well, there's a group of things, but they all sort of go together. That I love about Dave is that I believe that Dave's got actually a really humble heart, and that when he says, oh, "I really love you guys," he really does. He really does. Um, those words that aren't just like, you know, just spilling out as fillers. He, you have a great heart and love that about you. So this is Dave. Hey guys, um, it's uh, my privilege to introduce um, Jeremy um, on my right here. Um, and so Jeremy uh, is our uh, care and connections pastor here. Um, and uh, there are, uh, well, one of the funny things about Jeremy is that being that he's Care and Connections pastor, you know, you, you gather that he loves, he likes people and he likes to be with people and that kind of thing. But that being said, he is the least touchy person ever, like that I've ever, ever met. I'll do it. <laughs> and what I, what, I, what I love about it is how often I see him hug people. I take great joy in that. I just kind of sit back and go, right now, he's sacrificing himself uh, for, for, the, for the greater good here. Um, but at the same time, that is also what I love. It's funny, but it's what I love about him, is that he's just so willing to give of himself so freely to hug, to, to cry with, to laugh, like whatever it is. Um, he's in this position because uh, maybe God's called him into this position. Um, and uh, I'm honored to work with somebody who is so ready to sacrifice themselves, their time, um, and to, to be with people so that they can understand how greatly they are loved by God and that they can connect to, to Him in that way. So, yeah. Thanks, Dave. Eh? I didn't get a clap either, by the way. Like you got, so. so you can force one, just for um, This is Campbell. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty sure most of you will know him. Uh, Campbell's not only a senior pastor here at CBC, but he's also my brother-in-law, for those of you who didn't know that. Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> and Name we dropping. <laughs> and, and Campbell and I are probably a little bit more alike than what Dave and I are alike, and that we don't... I mean, that thing he did on my arm there is about as much as it gets, you know? And that's quite different with Dave. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cam Campbell's awesome. Campbell's this big picture vision guy who's always got ideas and he's always got a, 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 an amazing project that he wants to do. And that's one of the things that I love about Campbell because that's not me. Um, I don't have two hoots about any of that stuff. I just want to sit in a cafe or sit somewhere and have a conversation with somebody. And that's how we're different. Uh, and yet I just so appreciate Campbell for all that he brings. Uh, just being, being a father and a, and a husband to my sister. Uh, and all the things that he is. That's Campbell. Cool. So that's us. So we're going to cut straight to it. So this... Um, journey we're on of, of discovering God's love and this season we're right now of wanting to express our love to love one God. Um, a while ago Dave introduced us as staff to this thing called Sacred Pathways by Gary Thomas and and, um, and it, it had an impact on us as a staff and so through you know, sort of quite a long journey um, we're at a point now where we want to share this tool with you, this guide with you. So what I want to do to start with is just find out um, from each of you, like, how did you first get introduced to this? What was your first impressions from it, and and how has it been helpful for you? That would be cool. Um, it's really interesting. I I read the book a bunch of years ago, uh, but I hadn't really remembered it until Dave brought it to us as staff um, a little while ago. But the whole idea of sacred pathways, I think, has been a struggle that I've had for a long, long time. Uh, coming from quite a conservative uh, brethren background where, uh, you know, you, you didn't really express yourself in any other way than you sang hymns and things like that on Sunday morning. Going from that then to quite a, a ragey Pentecostal church, ending up in a Presbyterian church after that and then here at CBC. 
um, I've, I've struggled with a bunch of different styles and I've struggled to relate that back to myself. Because um, the truth is, I guess, is there are times when I relate to all of the styles, um, not necessarily connecting with them regularly, but sometimes I'll do all of the styles at one point or another. Um, what's been really helpful with this one is that I guess it's helped me narrow down and just be comfortable with who God's created me to be. Uh, I've really been able to find out and just go, oh yeah, that is, that is actually how I'm built, that is how I'm made. That's not to say that I then get put in a box and, and I've ticked that off about myself, because I still get to do whatever I like, I still get to express myself in whatever way I choose. To God, but there are specific ways that I'm comfortable with, and that's been really helpful for me to to figure that out. Cool. What about you, Dave? You're like you're like the guy that introduced us to this. So tell yeah. us about your journey. Um, yeah. So like for me, um, it was probably uh, seven seven-ish years ago that I first read the book. Um, uh, when I uh, started studying at Papua's Bible College, um, it was one of the recommended reads. And I picked it up just because it looked different. It wasn't one of the, the normal books that they were recommending. And, and I picked it up and I read it. And it, I, I instantly connected with it. I said, I was just like to myself. And I remember talking to people about it finally. You know, like somebody's written a book for me. You know, like, but, which is quite a funny thing because you can read, read a book, um, this book. And I've, I've known so many people who have read this book who are quite different to me and who have said it's really interesting it feels like this book was written like for me in terms of them understanding how they connect to God how he has wired them and how he has designed them to express their love to him um, and so yeah it's been it's been an interesting journey um, I've read this book I don't know how many times now um, uh, simply because it's been one of those books that I've been able to go back to read through and pick something out um, that I missed. Um, it's also been uh, one of those books that it's been super exciting to journey with different people on and for them to kind of go, oh, so it, does, it doesn't just mean that I have to do 10, like 10 minutes of reading my Bible and prayer every morning. It, it can look different to that. It can be 30 minutes or an hour or two hours or I could be doing it after I've just run up a mountain or, you know, like that kind of thing. And so for me, it's just been this incredibly exciting and free um, book to have read. Um, and, yeah, my, my soul has been blessed by what Gary Thomas has put together. Cool. Um, I, I guess for me, um, I've never read the book, still haven't. Um, <laughs> Dave introduced it a few months ago to us at start and, um, and introduced it by way of a little introduction and then a, and a test that we did. Um, like a little survey that we filled out and we had to answer I think about 50 questions and then total up our scores and find out the kind of worshipper we were like how we best connected and loved God and, and so I, I, I did the test and um, I'm, I don't like these kind of tests and, um, and then when I got the answers I was like oh that's interesting and then as I read the definitions of the answers I was like oh this, that's true you know it was like it just resonated with me and then it was so interesting hearing around the start all the answers and I suddenly thought there's something cool here like because if, if each person shared it made sense and I would say the thing that's been that's impacted me like there's a personal impact of, of understanding maybe a bit more about how I'm wired to express my love for God but I've really enjoyed realizing how other people do that's been a thing that's been important to me and and and, and I've it's, it's helped me have a better appreciation of others, which has been real cool. Um, so, so we did this um, survey, and, and, and you've each done it at different times, but we, we did it as a whole staff, and, and we, we filled out you know, the questionnaire thing. Um, so um, as you did the questionnaire, like, um, how did you find that? Like, like for me, I'm a sort of an anti-survey kind of guy, but I, I did it, like, and, um, and I was surprised by it, like, really was, but what was it like for you guys, like, doing the survey thing? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I find surveys interesting as well. I really have to, to try to not think 
too deeply about stuff and just answer it off the cuff because mm. otherwise I'll struggle and I'll go well yeah usually I'm like that sometimes I'm like this and other times I'm so I'll end up just confusing myself and then I end up with nothing so um, yeah it, um, it was a really good survey for me when I can just go through and really kind of reasonably quickly just the first thing that pops into my head write the answer down and yet when I came out with the results it was like Oh yeah, that actually sounds like me. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <coughs> it is. I mean, it, you know, part of today is actually introducing you to the practicality of it. And so, when you come to do the survey, just answer it. Don't don't pause. Just first first thing that comes to mind, first number. Like the way it works is it works on this number scale where um, where a one is that this is least true of you, and a five is this is most true of you, and you pick a number in between. So some of you are going to be all fours, it's just how you're wired, you know. Some of you won't want to choose a one or a five and you choose a three, you know. But, but it doesn't actually matter like you're answering as long as you consistently just answer in there like, like your first prompt. Otherwise you do what Jeremy did, it was really interesting, like Jeremy's got this question here that he really liked. Where is it? Um, it says this, I would enjoy attending a workshop on learning to worship through dance. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, no, it's not the end of the question. Or attending several worship sessions with contemporary music. I accept that God is going to move in some unexpected ways. So I remember it's just so funny, like we're all doing a test and Jeremy's just like going <laughs> And he and then afterwards we're like, what was that all about? And he's like, well it's like it's like well you tell us, like, what was that question doing for you? Well, the contemporary music thing I'm like, yeah. The dance thing I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, and so and so that and what was interesting is that that one question had the potential to skew his answers, you know, the, the shift. Um, and so that's where sometimes you've just got to just take it on face value. And and, and so and, and even now, I mean, I mean, Dave's a bit like David of the Bible. He'd like to have a good boogie down for worship, and Jeremy's a not. But I did. I have actually got it on my phone. Oh, I haven't got it with me. I actually did capture some dance going on at um. Welcome back, bridal couple. Yeah, Jonathan and Stephen back. Yeah, I, I actually got it on camera. Jeremy does. Sometimes you got to take one for the team. Yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He wasn't actually dancing to express his love for Jesus. He was expressing his love for Lindell. So that was cool. Okay. Um, Dave, is you, oh, so, so, so Jeremy, where did you land? Like, so you do the results. What what kind of pathway did you find? Okay, so. Um, my top three, I guess, if you like, as far as scores go, are, are naturalist, caregiver, enthusiast. So, so briefly describe those. Yeah, so, so <coughs> I enjoy getting out and doing stuff outdoors. That's the, the naturalist thing. It's enjoying the beauty of God's creation, uh, just being in amongst um, his creation, and just that's where I often most see God is in creation. Like I explained last week, when I'm hurtling down a mountainside on my bike, out of control, that's when I... Um, uh, but again, like, like I also said before, is that when I'm feeling most fulfilled is when I'm sitting one-on-one -on -one with somebody and they're sharing their heart with me and I'm getting to share my heart with them. That's when I really connect with God. I just know that God is using me and God is speaking to me through them and I get to speak to other people in that way as well. Uh, the enthusiast thing, that's that huge, I guess, that dichotomy of going, I am so not going to ask, but I just am so enthusiastic about showing my love to, to God and that there are just times when I'm singing in here, which I love, again, a difference from how I love being in here, and I just can't help but going, I need to lift my arm up, I need to raise my hand and go, these words that we're singing, that's me. I, 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 God, I, I just want to declare that I am wanting to sing that to you and praise you. Um, so yeah, three quite different things, but that's just how I'm made and wired, I guess. Cool. What about for you, Dave, as you, as you um, do the survey, um, any of the results <coughs> surprise you? How did it sit with you? What was your experience in that? Um, I've actually, uh, kind of going back to like my thoughts on the survey, I've done it quite a few times and I would go, you know, it, sometimes you'd almost kind of like forget your answers, like where you, which is quite a good thing and then come back to it. It's interesting that it always has come out the same. It's always, and, and 
Uh, I think that the order has shifted just a, like a little bit, like in terms of the top three, but they've always been always been the same. Um, so for me, um, that that's kind of been an affirmation in terms of yeah, this is this is good. This is something that um, is honest, and I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, uh, but in terms of anything that caught me off guard, mm -mm, no. I think what it did do is it gave it gave me language to what I couldn't understand. So talk to us about that. Like like tell us the three that yep. were your top three, yep. and then maybe one of those where it's given you language. Yeah, cool. So I'm enthusiast. Surprise. Um, <laughs> sensate. Contemplative. Um, and so for me, the one that it gave most language to was sensei. Because okay. we went on. Yeah. What is that? So sensei is sensei, not sensei, although you can call me sensei if you want. <laughs> you know. um, no, sensei is loving God through the senses. Um, so it's been, um, it's been inspired. It's kind of like a nature thing, but in terms of when the naturalists are out running around and they're captivated by nature and seeing God's glory through that, that they're drawn to connecting to God, feeling his love and expressing their love. Sensei is, is kind of the same, but not necessarily in nature. So it can be through a piece of art or, or music. Um, yeah, that's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's scenery? Uh, an artwork of a scenery? Yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> um, and uh, it, can be, it can be through taste, even you know, like you can you, you taste something that's just so ridiculously good, and it makes you want to cry. And you're like, oh my gosh, this! What have I just put on my mouth? In a good way, you know. It's not like, oh my gosh, what have I just put on my mouth? But yeah, like, but then at the same time, for me, it's been really interesting because I've always felt a draw to really old things especially old churches or like buildings of architectural significance like when you look at a building you go man that is that is stunning like seriously we build like tin sheds these days and put shops in it mm. and that's what Selfridge did back in the day you know like that that is a shopping department that's what I want to go to so that's <laughs> that kind of thing but then churches is next level where I'm just like man I just see it sitting there and I'm like, I'm, I, need, I've, I want to walk inside and I, I'm just so ready to, for my senses to be blown. I hope they have incense burning. I hope that there are bells ringing. I hope that there are monks chanting, you know, like whatever it might be. But it's just like, I, I, it's, some would call it a sensory overload, but for me, I feel like God going, this is how much I love you. You can experience me in this many ways all at the same time. And I'm like, Yes! <laughs> cool, that's it. Just give us a brief description of that contemplative for some of my Okay, yeah, contemplative. It's very, it, um, you could almost say it's opposite to enthusiast, um, which is what I'm number one in. Um, but it's not, it, it's, not it's, it's that, that deep desire to know it, that you are, you are greatly loved by God and that in that you're carving out like some time, whatever, however that might look, to just sit in His truths, and and it might not necessarily mean that you're you're reading the Bible. It might not necessarily mean that you're even praying, but that you're just sitting aware of God's presence, and that's enough. And you're just, man, God, I'm so thankful right now that you're with me, and that there's nothing I can do that will ever separate me from your love. So I think that's where like, like the Mary Martha story is quite interesting in that Mary's very contemplative. Yeah. You find her on several occasions. She's just yeah. she's just wants to be there close to Jesus and, and yeah, his his presence. That's cool. Um, for me as I um, as I did the, the, the test thing, um, I had two that were high and everything else was low, so it was like I don't know what that means. Um, so I didn't have a three. Um, and mine was uh, naturalist and, and intellectual. I liked that intellectual one. I thought that was cool. I thought it was wrong, so I was like checking it out. Because it's like, I'm, under intellectual, some of the descriptions had like quoted all these amazing thinkers and authors from the past, and that I would be into reading their books, and I'm not. So it's like I was trying to figure that out. Um, and, and it wasn't until a while after the, taking the, the survey that, that I realised what that meant for me, this idea of intellectual. It wasn't about being brainy. 
it was that thought matters, that thinking matters. And, I, and I've experienced quite a few times since we did this, uh, um, it, it's not like it was something new, it was, it was my eyes being opened to see something that was already present in my life. And that's when, when I'm giving focused thought about God and His Word and wrestling with an idea, and then I have pause to stop and engage with Him, that, that's some of my best times of expressing love to Him and praying and worshiping. Is, and, and it was interesting, like, um, like if on a Sunday um, one of the um, worship leaders from the front leads us by way of saying, let's, uh, if they did that thing of, hey, we're entering God's presence and let's praise Him, I'm like, yeah, okay. And then like last week, Dave says um, this little thing from the Psalms where he goes, um, you know, that God and what He's done is not secret. And he shared, like, the thought that's thought about that these things are not a secret. He doesn't keep them secret. They, they're made known. That thought, I'm just suddenly there going, oh, what was that? And I'm thinking about that while I'm here. And then suddenly my engagement in worship last Sunday morning was heightened because of the thought, this, this, this truth from God's Word, you know, engaging with that. So that's where we're, we're I guess what we're wanting to say though is we're all really different. How we get, he's the same God, same love, same word and truth, but our way that we then process that and express that back to him is very different. And I think what we've each discovered is that as you identify that and you, you, you give expression to that, the Lord Jesus, he meets you there. And that's what's, what's really significant. Just like he met David and Jacob and Martha and Mary, he, he meets us there too. Um, as, you, um, as, as we did this together, we shared with each other um, what we discovered. Um, <coughs> any reactions to what you discovered about each other as we did this together? Um, I think alongside a, a very pastoral and caring nature that I now I have, I can also be very critical. Um, and... I do struggle with people who are polar opposite to me. Uh, so, so Dave and I have this love-hate relationship, I guess, in some ways, because we are so polar opposites in, in some of the things or some of the ways that we express ourselves. So uh, some of Dave's really expressive attributes about his love for, for God, I just don't get. I'm just <laughs> like, what are you on about? Um, so when I'm, we're going around the room at staff room and people uh, are... Uh, I guess, sharing their results or whatever, I, I do find it hard n not to judge. Um, and that's something, I guess, that I've struggled with for a long time. I do just remember one um, thing just really quickly where I was in a church and uh, I don't know how long ago it was. It was a long time ago, maybe 20 years ago. And a lady, it was, she was kind of dancing with flags. And I was just a really caught myself, I think it was one of those times where God was like, you're judging this person and you need to stop. Because um, I was, I looked at her with such disdain and I was just like, what are you doing, baby? <laughs> but it's just because it so wasn't me. Um, and I, I, that's something I struggle with. I need to really keep my judgments in check and just actually uh, apologise and repent, I guess, sometimes of doing that. Um... I would like I would say that after having like heard where everybody was at sort of thing and even like people trying to figure out what, what does this mean for me, um, it's been like what I shared initially, this this idea of like journeying this with, uh, with other people and kind of like the, the freedom that you start to discover like you see in their lives as well as you, you remember in your own life and you, you continue to explore and that kind of thing, it's been this continuation like within a within our team sort of thing and just going man if this is just a, with like seven seven or eight people you know i'm just so excited to see what that will look like within the, within our whanau here yeah? like within this community where god's just going i so want you to know how i have designed you to connect with me to accept my love to feel my love and to respond to my love in love and i'm just going man like this was this has been like Shift, shifting, it's been culture shaping for like for us as a team in a way, and just going, man, 
what does God have in store for us? Well, we know that it's freedom. You know, He wants us to, to step into what He has for us. Um, but I'm just excited that there is a freedom in knowing that it will look different for each one of us. Mm. And like what you were saying, yeah. that's okay. Mm. It's okay for it to look different for each one of us mm. because God has made us all uniquely. We are all image bearers. Mm. And he wants us to come to know what, what is that image that he has placed in us that he wants us to bear, to express and to show one with each other and two in this world. Yeah, I think I, I think for me it's there's a similar in that um, one of the things that I've appreciated th- through just in that smaller group um, hearing the the, the 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 I guess the the evaluation I mean, the, the, the results and then looking at what they mean is um, I've gained an appreciation I guess of the of that diversity and almost like there's actually some joy with that and I know like this last week you led us for the staff to ask the question about you know how have we been going with that and have we been finding opportunity to express that and and I think even that's helpful for us to better care for each other and know how to speak into each other's lives and 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 value each other so I think I think that's been cool one of the things the idea with the course um, that is really helpful is that as you go through and you do the survey and then you um, you know, you get the results, and you might look. I might look up like naturalist or intellectual, and it will give it will give some description, some definition of that. But it also gives you some things, some questions to reflect on, and some practices, and, <coughs> and they're actually really helpful to be able to go. So I find this out, and it sort of resonates. But what does that look like? And so it's actually got some really practical tools. I think what I've enjoyed about the others pieces here, and how others have got on with that, um, which is cool. Um, some, somehow, though, this is not designed so that we all, as individuals, go off and separate and just always be doing our own thing, and then we're never like so because we're so diverse. What does coming together look like? Um, and I, I mean, like I just mentioned earlier about you know that that I can, I can, be feel free, you know, to sit and to I guess to be more thoughtful than enthusiast during corporate, but I also feel a call to join an enthusiastic worship too. Um, I do. Um, I do think there's still a lot for us to learn from each other and that appreciation of each other, and, and that's where we're hoping that that as we do this guide, um, if you're at all able to do that with other people, whether it's in a life group or with a friend, to be able to interact. I think one of the things that we've found value is to be able to interact with each other over this has been a help. Um, do any of you want to describe anything else about um, how this has either helped you or what excites you about CBC? I'm good, I think I said my bit. The only other thing that I wanted to add, I guess, is that what we really need to not forget is that this is about the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, and a really important part of this <coughs> is, is a thing to think about, and that is how can I use the abilities and personality and skills and gifts that God's given me to reach those who don't know him yet? Um, and I think for me, one of the cool things to be able to think around is going, what are some of the natural things that I do that I can use to connect with people who don't know Jesus? So that was just something that I've been thinking about the last couple of days that I thought it's really important to remember. So. Yeah, there's, there's not a disconnect in that, oh, this is, you know, we, we all, you know, are coming to know his love for us and your love for him might be expressed in this way, this way, this way, but that's not disconnected with how you would then love your family or love your neighbor or love each other like this and this whole journey we're on this year about being loved and loving one god and loving one another and loving <coughs> one that's lost they're all intertwined with each other and 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 we can't like just treat them in isolation i think it's just so true please just just um take this as an opportunity to actually discover another way in which you can love God. He's called us to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. And sometimes I find myself thinking, how how can I love God? What does it look like? And and I I feel like for me that this year through doing the sacred pathway as one of the inputs and then my own journey of trying to discover God's love that that the sacred pathways along with that desire to discover God's love has unlocked some things for me about myself and helped me like see things, join the dots, so that now as the naturalist intellectual, and that's not to box me in as that, but it frees me to go, man, 
thinking more deeply about some things, when I'm outside and spaced by myself, I'm discovering that that is my greatest point of connection. So I seek that more now.